Hey friends, welcome to the Raising Boys and Girls podcast. I'm Sissy Goff. And I'm David Thomas. And I'm Melissa Trevathan. And we're so glad you joined us for this conversation. Let's dive in. Making our way from a sleepy surf town in Northern California to Music City in 2001, singer-songwriter Joy Williams has walked through several chapters of life already, and she's only just getting started. You may know her from solo music like her latest Grammy-nominated album, Front Porch, that we love, or you may know her from her current radio show, Southern Craft, on Apple Music, or you may know her as one half of the four-time Grammy award-winning duo, The Civil Wars. She's toured with the likes of Adele, has written and performed songs with Taylor Swift, which she says earns her cool mom points these days, and has written a slew of songs for TV shows and films you know and love. But when she's not in the studio, she's spending her time with her family that, as she likes to say, changed shape in recent years. Much like the music industry, life rarely goes the way you plan, but that doesn't have to be a bad thing. Joy went through a divorce in 2019 with two small children, and in the last few years, she has been reimagining her life in beautiful ways she could have never dreamed possible, including getting remarried and blending a family of five children, one of whom was just born a few months ago. We are so excited for you to listen to this podcast with our wise, insightful, delightful friend, Joy Williams. We are just so honored you said yes to doing this with us. Uh, We've been dreaming about it yes, for a long time. Oh, man, thanks I for hope asking. you know how much we both think the world of you. Yes. I mean, respect you so much, like you so much, enjoy oh, you so much. Thank just you. A gift to get to sit with well, you. Well, thanks for loving the mess. Oh, yeah, I appreciate well, it. We're in there with you. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> All of us together. I know that's what yep. makes it good, though. Mm. You know, I always say that. Um, I'm a recovering perfectionist, so mm-hmm. I I will never forget someone saying if you if you don't really really let someone in, there's no outlet for anyone to plug into, mm-hmm. and that always felt so wow. powerful to me that it was like I, when I you know I think that whole breaking down process happened as soon as I moved out of the mm-hmm. house, but um, which is longer than I care to admit, but. Um, yeah, it life's too short to just pretend you have it together. Yeah, because mm. no one has it together. Right, Agreed. like it's all improv jazz, man. Yeah, <laughs> we're just trying to find yes. the key so that we can do it together. Yes. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, along those lines, let's just start there. Will you tell us where you grew up? Yeah. How you met Ted? Mm-hmm. A little bit about your family. Let's just start into your story. Yeah. Well, I. I like to say I was raised in what a lot of people might think was like a military family, but it was actually a ministry family. Mm. We moved every four years, basically. Mm. From the, Before wow. the time of 10, I lived in every major quadrant of the U.S. And um, But I call home Northern California, just south of San Francisco, in what used to be a sleepy surf town called Santa Cruz. Mm. Uh, the Beach Boys sang about it. And um, it was like once I landed there... I was like, oh, I found my, I found my place. Mm. And it was redwood trees and ocean and lots of excuses to be outside. Mm. And I lived uh, on what would be considered campgrounds. Um, So Mm. I had acres and acres and acres to run and get lost and find my way back and scrape my knees in the creek. And, um, and those were really, really pivotal moments for me. I would start singing in the forest. That was just, I would, I just found myself singing. Wow. My mom was a singer. That's how my dad and my mom met. My mom was traveling um, in this little like college group singing. And my dad was at a camp, another camp Uh, and saw her and was like, I'm going to marry her. So music kind of was just in the bone marrow and in the DNA. Mm. And um, yeah. And, and so I think singing outside became a real medicine for me. And I was always a really deep feeling kid too. And so that was a way for me to express without even having words, but letting melody kind of be the medicine. Mm. And then my mom taught me the active listening part of harmony. And so we would go outside and do nature walks and sing together. Wow. And 
I've never even heard someone say that, the act of listening part of harmony. That's yes. fascinating. Yeah, that's one of my favorite things about music, which parallels so much in how we interact as humans, is, yes. is if I'm not listening to you, I'm never going to be able to come alongside you mm. and and meet you and, and make it more beautiful. So mm. I have to be listening to you mm. in order to do that well. And so my mom taught me to do that really early on. Wow. And, um, and that became my introverts uh like portal to extroversion mm. was i started singing with my mom mm. and then i started singing uh in the choir at my school and then the choir teacher was like hey you need to come to the front and i was like no i do not <laughs> No, I absolutely do not. And then I did. And I realized, mm. hey, I actually kind of like this. And um, and a little bit of people pleaser came in on that. In of a, course. I said little, but I meant a lot. And <laughs> let's just get real. And, um, and, and so that's how I wound my way. Long story is I was, you know, singing at church and got sort of discovered and it was during the Leanne Rhymes era where mm. it was like, oh cool, she just started ovulating. We'll sign her. And <laughs> so, so it was of that era. And wow. uh, and so I came to Nashville way too young and way too naive. And instead of going to college like I'd worked really hard to do in high school and had gotten scholarships, I chose to forego college and start running a business mm. and being the CEO of my own music entity at 18 cool. and uh, going on the road and on buses for 250 days a year. 250 I, days a year. First yes. two years, each year was 250 days a year. And I almost damaged my voice beyond repair. Mm. Of course. And, uh, wow. and I wouldn't recommend being the only 18 year old girl on a bus full of grown adults. Mm. no matter what genre of music that you're mm. in. So it was a lot. It was a lot to come into. And I just told you my whole life story so you can subscribe now to this other podcast. I hope that's <laughs> not too long. I'm trying to be succinct. But, um, mm. you know, it was a lot of sort of m moving and shifting. And um, Nashville was never something that I thought that I would uh, aspire to. Mm. I never thought that I'd be here. I never thought that I would sing professionally. I actually wanted to sit with families and and do what you guys are doing, mm. but I'm so thankful you're doing it. And now I'm the one mm. who's coming and sitting with you guys. <laughs> and Patches, too. And Patches, I'm sorry, she's digging me a little. Yes. I'm not. We're just digging for the good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. You, you would have been a fabulous therapist, by the way. I mean, yes, I'm so yeah. grateful that's not what you're doing for the world, <laughs> but Agreed. you would have been phenomenal. Oh, thank you. I sometimes dream of what it would be like, but I'd have to go all the way back mm. to like gen ed mm. for college. But who knows? Life is long, but I have lots of kids, so wow. I don't I don't foresee sitting in a, a, a room yet in yeah. an academic way. I'm trying to be outside and pass that on to my kids now, too. Mm. Um, you asked about how I met Ted, my husband. And um, this is where I do. I feel so old now where it, it's like my second husband. So it's like the imaginary cigarette flick. I just feel. <laughs> but life, you know, life does happen in ways you don't anticipate. And I'll always be grateful for Miles and Poppy mm -hmm. and always be grateful to their dad for the the miracles and the marvels of who they are. Mm -hmm. And um and and it was actually my eldest son, Miles, and Ted's oldest daughter, Andorra, uh that in a way were sort of the portals to us knowing each other because our kids went to the same school. Mm -hmm. And we found Ted and I found ourselves uh becoming solo parents in a really in a really similar time frame mm. and and we'd been school buds before mm. and so it was sort of like how are you doing how are you holding in there like how's it going it's really it's so challenging being a solo parent all of a sudden like yes. how are you handling it and um and you know at once life settled a bit more ted um 
who is as kind as he is handsome. <laughs> um, Andor just called him a Disney prince the other day. And I was like, that's accurate. Um, <laughs> like, think Gaston from, <laughs> from Beauty and the Beast. But without the that's ego good. like that. Yes. Um, but I, he he just very, very respectfully just said, I, I've always held you in high regard. And mm. I wonder if you'd ever like to go to dinner. And I promptly said no. Wow. Because I was scared of the overlap. And... Mm. Um, God just had a way of like niggling in the best ways that, mm. you know, it was like another year or so. And mm. I, I dated the idea mm. of, and I was not on the apps. I just was like, I'm going to do things that I love and I'm going to trust that I'll meet people along the way. Mm. Wow. And, um, <laughs> and I did, and they were, um, helpful in clarifying how wonderful Ted is. Mm. I'll say it that way. That every time I'd be like, well, I'm just disappointed at this. Mm. Uh, there's not like a, a richness or a depth of soul. Mm. And I'm like, where's the, where, who, what bar, like <laughs> what, by what bar am I measuring? Right. The, and I realized it was 10. Wow. And, um, and so my friend became my husband and we have been in the adventurous mountain journey together of blending our families. Mm. And how many kids will you say their names? Yes. Yeah. Um, so we have we we have five children together. Um, and I'll break it down. So um Miles is my bio son, and he is almost 12. Um Can full of life and curiosity. Mm. And we have my bonus daughter, Andora. She just turned eleven. She is deep waters, mm. so creative. And um, my bonus son, Mac, is eight, almost nine. And it, like he is like the living embodiment of strength and um, and speed mm. and kindness. And uh, Poppy, my bio daughter, is five and a half and is her name. Like she's mm. so carbonated. <laughs> and, uh, and then Ted and I, mm. after we high-fived each other, uh, after getting married, we were so, we were like we're we've got such a great brood of kids we're done this is awesome eight months into our marriage we found out we were pregnant <laughs> <laughs> so we have our rainbow we have our rainbow baby um theo named yeah. after his dad obviously so um and he's not even five months and he is just light and whimsy and redemption without mm. us ever having anticipated that. Mm. So that is our wild woolly circus of a family. Wow. Yeah. And we're very, I feel very alive, mm. feel very tired. Mm. And I feel very alive. Yeah. Like what a gift, what a gift to love them mm. and to learn from each other, you know? Yes. Yes. I love your descriptions and feel so true of what we know about you of how <laughs> you see and know your kids mm, which trying. I would go back to active listening mm. is so much of who you are ah thank you yeah have you heard that Anne Lamott quote about laughter as carbonated holiness yes sounds like Poppy. I love Anne Lamott so much do you know we got to talk to her stop it yes we don't know why she said yes. We almost what do you mean you don't the, know why she said we yes? We almost wrecked the car when we got the email that she said <laughs> we yes. Could barely we barely function. Oh, my gosh. She, if I could sit down over tea with, if she'd be on my, she'd be on my top five. Her book, uh, uh, Bird by Bird, was a, was seminal in my mm -hmm. career of, mm -hmm. of songwriting because my red pen was so fierce early on mm -hmm. that I could hardly get through a writing session without, like, folding into self-loathing mm. yes. that totally shut me down. And that mm. that book, along with The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield, that absolutely mm. changed my wow. perspective on how I could write and create in general. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay, now I'm going to go back time. and scroll and find Anne Lamott on your podcast. So, Okay, so if we were going to shift to music for a minute. Yeah, yeah. I do that too sometimes. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> well, sometimes. Well, will you talk a little bit about your journey with music? Mm -hmm. And what are some of the most meaningful songs you've been a part of? Oh, wow. It's a hard question, probably. Yeah, it's like asking what's your who's your favorite kid. Yes, um, I'm sure. Don't have one. Um, <laughs> but I, I will say, so when I first started doing music, mm -hmm. I was involved in a genre that's the singular genre defined by the lyrical content 
versus wow. the sonic content. So wow. it's faith-based music. I've never heard anyone say that. That's so true. I remember being 19 and being like, that is bizarre. Huh. Like, I wonder why there has to be a differentiation. Hmm. And I and I started having deeper questions about that uh, that led to a lot of deconstruction mm. of my faith and other things. Mm. And um, so I left doing faith-based music and started doing music for TV film uh, around the age of 23, 24. Okay. And, and then I, I sort of, I, I almost had to detox from my first initial foray into music. Mm. Um, I had a, I had a, I had a, a pretty high octane and like hard knocks experience. Well, obviously based on just even the touring piece you were yeah. talking about a minute ago. Yeah, there's so much that will go unspoken, but if we have another day we could talk about. Yeah. But I I think what it did was it taught me really what do I want to do versus mm -hmm. what I don't want to do. Yes. I learned a little bit of the cautionary tale of I don't want to bifurcate myself. I want I want to show up as my whole person, mm -hmm. questioning, messy, you know, um and I also felt really hemmed in by the lyrical uh mm -hmm. aspect. I felt like my faith in what I was working out felt a lot more uh expansive mm -hmm. than what I was experiencing at the time. Mm -hmm. And so I I I just kind of had to lick my wounds a little bit and regroup mm -hmm. and TV film became that safe place and it was right during the era of Grey's Anatomy. So thank goodness for that show and a whole wow. other slew and I wrote a commercial for I wrote the new jingle for Oscar Meyer. No, you did not. Sure did. Wow, um, I didn't know that. And that became the seedbed money for mm -hmm. Uh, for what became the the indie band known mm. as the Civil Wars. Mm. And I met John Paul White during a, a, a writing camp that I sort of got tossed into last minute. It was like, let's bring the let's bring her in. I was like, what am I doing here? Everybody here <laughs> writes on Music Row. Like I'm I'm like, ah, hi, everybody. <laughs> but we you know, that day really changed the the whole trajectory of my life. Mm. And that experience of being in the duo it really, I I got to tick off so many bucket list moments. You sure, know, I've got I, I have a matching tattoo with Adele. No, you do not. I do on my wrist. No, um, what does it say? It's just it's just three dots, and it's just an ellipsis, which means to be continued. And wow. um, and then she and I um, stayed close for quite a while mm. and then we found ourselves pregnant at the same time both had boys wow. and so it, the three dots became more mm. symbolic too mm. and um you know and and getting to write you know with taylor swift which is just the first safe and sound for the hunger games movie that <laughs> has just that keeps earning me cool points now with my with my kids so I go in the cafeteria now and but like no one, Miles is like pr actually proud that I'm there versus <laughs> like, what are you doing here, mom? So, um, but I think the songs that, you know, I am the most proud of, I, I they're seasonal, right? Mm -hmm. So yes. I'm really proud of Poison and Wine that I wrote with John Paul White and another writer mm -hmm. named Chris Lindsay, because it really does talk about the light and the dark of relationship mm. and the tug and the pull that we feel as humans mm. um that felt like as bob dylan said i just want my voice to tell the truth mm -hmm. if it sounds like it's telling the truth yeah. so i just want to tell the truth yes. and then i think after the civil wars ended i did a record called the front porch or front porch not the front porch joy um, <laughs> af after i finished the civil wars i made a record called front porch and um, I was processing the death of my father. And mm. so there's a song on there because he was one of the good ones. Mm. Um, I, I wrote a song called Preacher's Daughter. Mm. And I still can't get through that whole song without getting watery eyed. Yeah. And so I'm proud of that because that honors my dad mm. and speaks to the story of um, loss, mm. which I think so many of us can feel mm. and know whether we've lost someone uh, permanently or we've lost someone in you know, that's still living, which can feel like walking with a ghost. Yes. I think we can relate with some of that too. Hopefully mm -hmm. I'm not the only one that feels that way. No. But yeah. so, yeah, but it shifts every once in a while. I'll write one with another artist that I 
as long as I can help them tell their truth, I'm proud of that too. Mm. So, and I'm working on new music, but that I'm also That's changing exciting. lots of diapers. Yes. So right. th- right. yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of specializing in human development. right? Now. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Well, building on that. So thinking about meaningful songs you've been a part of, Joy, you have won countless awards, including <laughs> four Grammys. You have written, toured, recorded, performed in unbelievable places toured with Adele, written with Taylor Swift, like thinking on all these amazing opportunities you've been given. Do you have any particular career hi- highlights that stand out? <laughs> I mean, I, um, yeah, but it's like, do you have a bucket for the name drop? Um, <laughs> just get out your bucket. Um, <laughs> it, I was backstage at an awards show that we were performing at and Paul McCartney came and said he was a fan. No. Oh. And I literally, y'all, I needed like an adult diaper in that moment. <laughs> Course, because that I w- I just started crying. <laughs> I'm sure, joy. That was a career highlight, and wow. then in the same afternoon, Bruce Springsteen stopped with his wife Patty and said the same thing. No, and so that moment, I will. I, those, it's not. It's it's. I just grew up so affected by their music, mm, you know, and course. so it was like you know my name. Um, that felt really special. Um. Mm. But I think a career highlight is any time I see kids singing songs back, mm. you know, and uh, or like getting a video of like my daughter just was singing your song front porch and like here it is. Like oh, that to wow. me is also a career highlight mm. yes. because music has such an amazing magic of ripple that it, it will live on even when I pass. So mm. that to me is like the fact that it could ever be evergreen mm. feels like a career highlight to yes. me. Yes. And impacting so many generations. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. From Paul McCartney to a little girl who loves <laughs> Ralph Lauren. Yeah. Well, okay. There's so many different topics we could cover. So we'll just bounce from kids to music to all the I things. I mean, isn't that just real life in general? No, yes. it's so true. So blending families. Mm-hmm. I love how you said that before we even started. Yeah, that you're not. I, I always laugh that people say we're a blended family as if it had already happened mm-hmm. in the past. But instead, I, I like to put an ing on it of mm. we are blending. Yes. We're, a, we're an ever blending family because mm. it is an everyday thing. Yeah. Well, and you told such a beautiful story just walking in, which I know just every day has its own, all the words. I don't even know what I would put on it. All the words. And my husband, Ted, and I say that it's all in the blender. Yes. You know, and it's, it's like, and we also joke that when you... If if life is a video game, if you decide to have an ever blending family, you have gone immediately to advanced level Ooh, because it so requires true. so much focus and attention. Yes. And there's lots of times you're like, where's the button for this one? <laughs> and there's right. not. And yeah. we, we the other phrase we use a lot, Ted and I, is that we're building the plane in midair. Mm. Mm. And that is it's there's so much grace, patience and sort of uh I would say almost like a dark humor that's required <laughs> um, to laugh at the difficulty and the complexity and the beauty mm-hmm. of trying to to blend families. Mm-hmm. So yes. many different dynamics, yes. so many different needs. And when you're coming from divorce, you you're you're coming in with a limp. Mm-hmm. Everybody's coming in with a limp. Right. How do you support your children? How do you make space for them? How do you um, incorporate what it looks like to move together and still remember that you did come from two different tribes. Mm-hmm. What do you hold sacred in that regard? How do you um, do your best to incorporate and respect the other uh, co-parents? Mm-hmm. How do you blend when it comes to you'll never be their mom? I don't want to be their mom right. because they already have a mom, not because I don't want to be their mom, right. but because they that that place is taken in love in a way that ought to be there. How mm-hmm. do I support that? Um, and much and much like their father as well for my kids. So right. it's kind of that idea of what does it look like to be a mother figure in the house while you're not their mother yes. and vice versa. And um, I mean, just the ins and outs, y'all. It's it's so complex. Ugh. Well, that I wanted to know what what are some of the kind of unique joys? Yeah. And what encouragement would you give for folks who are listening who are in the same, who are entering into that stage of life or yeah. in it? Yeah. Um, 
gosh. <laughs> I mean, it makes me it makes me get water in my eyes because the depth of difficulty that it can bring. Mm -hmm. Because the statistic is that, I mean, it's second marriage with children, the divorce rate is exponentially higher yeah, like than that. even just getting married for the first time. Mm -hmm. So you know that it's going to be a Mount Everest climb, mm -hmm. but the the exact degree of difficulty that you experience, I think, can equally bring about mm -hmm. the joy. Mm -hmm. And, and the love and the bravery and all those good things in life that you hope for. Mm -hmm. As I'm still new in on the process, we're two years in, we, we've, you know, been dating, we were dating years prior to that. Um, and, and much of it was navigating the waters of how do we help our kids, um, I think that I, I don't have necessarily advice because I'm still trying to work it out too. But I will say every hour I've spent working on my own emotional healing mm -hmm. has only benefited my marriage and my children, mm -hmm. bonus or bio. And, yes. and that if we don't transform that pain, we'll transfer it. Mm -hmm. So that might be that as you're building the plane midair, don't forget to go to that session. Don't forget that group therapy. Don't forget that mentor that you can call and fall apart mm -hmm. with. Um, and I think I will never forget my own therapist saying, um, just remember on average, it takes seven years for a family to say that they have fully blended. Wow. I've never heard that seven years. Yeah. So wow. it's been in those moments when me, the kid that grew up at camp, it's like, why can't we all just be in the bunk together? And like, <laughs> you know, this isn't what, what, why, why is this taking so long? You know, and Ted being like, hey, babe, slow your roll. Like, this is, this is not a sprint. Mm. This is a marathon. And, and, and we're at high altitudes too. So right. it requires, if you're at a high altitude, it requires you to slow down, mm -hmm. make sure you've got enough oxygen yourself yes. and that you're bringing your partner along with, and that you're moving shoulder to shoulder because mm -hmm. it's so easy to do it toe to toe when you've been a solo parent. It's mm -hmm. so easy to go, Never mind, I got this. Yeah. Because you had to before. Mm -hmm. And so there has to be a real sense of, almost laughter. Like when I'm like, oh, I'm doing it again, you mm. know, I'm like, oh babe, I'm like, I'm, I'm doing the, I got this again, aren't I? And he's like, yeah, yeah, you definitely are. <laughs> <laughs> How can I help? Will you let me help? Mm. I've benefited from sitting mm. with you two, mm. you know, as friends and, 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 and I, I really have to, I have to give a shout out to women in my life that I've known this one woman named Joni since I was 10 mm. and we've stayed in touch since I was 10 years old. And I mean, as only, as I believe as only God could do, mm. she went through very similar things that I did that wow. now I can call her and say, Oh my gosh, I'm really struggling today with, and she'll go, Hey, I remember what that was like. Remember Remember, mm. if you can move through this this way, I guarantee you there's another side to this. It mm. won't always be this way. Wow. And um, Amy Grant's been another one of those, mm. you know, where our lives have paralleled in so mm. many ways, music and otherwise. Yes. And and for me to be like, sis, I, <laughs> help me. I'm mm. pregnant and we were not anticipating this. And how did you do this? Mm. And, you know, to hear Amy go, Hey, it's okay. Not, if not all the kids are excited on the front end, yeah. it's okay. Yeah. Just remember if you stay steady, they'll find steady. Mm -hmm. If you find, if you find steady, they'll find steady. Mm -hmm. And, and to just That's so good. be the adult, mm -hmm. just be the adult mm -hmm. as much as you possibly can. Um, and, and remember that to take your children seriously, but not always literally. Oh, that's what so great good. Words. Yes. Joy. <laughs> Man. Okay, building on that wisdom, we would love to ask you this. You talked about the age span. So yeah. from 12 to five months. <laughs> yeah. We'd love to ask you 
What, if anything, has changed with your parenting from your oldest to your youngest? Oh, man. I mean, Sissy, your book, uh, you know, The Worry-Free Parent, mm. um, I think we could, it could be summed up like this, you know, is I think with my first with Miles, I was working so hard. I was, I mean, I found out I was pregnant with him two days into a 50 city tour. I wow. didn't stop. I did not stop. Until a week before he was born, I played Bonnaroo in the White House. Oh and then goodness. I gave birth. And then I went Joy. back out on the road two months after he was born. And then wow. the Civil Wars like stopped very abruptly um, under really difficult circumstances. And I look back at how I parented in that era. It was so infused with distraction mm. and anxiety. Mm. And... I, I, I can't move through my life without thinking that that has affected mm. my son. Mm. And it has. And we've had lots of really good, hard, tearful, reparative mm. conversations. And I think that era, I mean, the poor firstborns anyways. I mean, it's like <laughs> guinea pigs. I'm so sorry to everyone that's their firstborn. Thank you. Um, we both yeah. are. <laughs> yeah. um, but I, I, I do think I'm, I'm less anxious now, mm. I'm, although I will say, I think that that might be a thorn that mm. keeps me humble and prayerful. Mm. And, and as I move more towards trust and intuition mm. and knowing they're going to be okay, mm. they're going to have pain, but they're going to be okay. So long as I move towards repair when there's rupture and equipping versus uh, placating mm -hmm. Ugh. that they're going to be, okay. be writing all these things down. So, this is so good. <laughs> so I Joy. think that's, that's been the, the, the shift that's been the shift. Mm. Um, and maybe that's the difference too, of like getting pregnant at 29 and then finding myself pregnant at 40 and being like, Oh wow, we're doing this all over again. Mm. My friends are telling me about their daughter is going off to college and I'm registering for newborn diapers. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I must, I must need to go through another process too mm -hmm. with this beautiful boy mm -hmm. and that Ted and I get to experience uh, a whole other era of parenting when we didn't anticipate on top of trying to be mindful as we head into uh, hormones, autonomy, mm -hmm. rites of passage, um, individuating. Yes. All of it. I'm so not prepared mm -hmm. and I don't have to be today. Because yeah. as they say in the 12 step program, like what's today? Let's just say it's Wednesday. Like mm. we're going to do Wednesday things. Mm. Let's just do Wednesday things, mm. you know. And yes. I tell my kids that too, if they start getting ahead of themselves too, like, hey, what's the day? Oh, well, today's Friday. Okay, let's just do Friday things. That's and so that settles good. some of the anxiousness too mm -hmm. of the, the future forecasting mm. that may or may not be positive, mm -hmm. which most of the time, let's be honest, it's generally when we forecast, it's, it's, it's on, it's not on the sunny side. I agree. Think. <laughs> Agreed. Right. Yes. For all of us. Yeah. Joy. I mean, this, this is exactly what we knew. We knew. This conversation would <laughs> be did. like long winded. Yes. And, no, no. <laughs> no. Just beautiful and, and thoughtful. Uh, yes. Yes. And I mean, I, I feel like, yeah, just. I, I feel like I would like to title this "Wow" episode. Wow, <laughs> wow, <laughs> enjoy William. Um, just so many of the things you've talked about, and and David and I would use so many words to describe you about your depth and brilliance. You have used maybe five words that I don't know what they mean. I almost had to stop <laughs> you several times and say, "Wait, how does that?" Um, and I think you're so intuitive with uh, your kids. Thanks. We've said that several times, but you really are. It's such a gift, and um, I learn. Every time I sit with you mm. because of what you're watching, what you're discovering and your intuition and your intuition about your children, your intuition about life, the way things work, your honesty and vulnerability and how those dovetail together. And we have been talking so much with parents about how to learn to to be able to hear our own intuition, mm. which hopefully is resonating with the voice of God in our lives. Yeah. We've got to quiet the voice of worry. Mm -hmm. And so will you talk about that? I mean, I don't know that we've ever talked about how do we develop intuition? Huh. How do you learn to listen to it? But I think you're 
if there was ever an expert on it, you would be oh, one in I mind. don't know. I don't but. know. I mean, I actually, it's, it's funny that you touch on that because uh, just recently in my own therapy, um, we've been talking about instinct injury he... and that I was, I, I had in so many ways a really um, loving, equipping childhood. And I was also raised to be very compliant. Mm. And, and so some of that instinct got tamped down Mm. and then, um, going through a divorce process and, and the pain involved with that, um, and, and something that I wasn't anticipating coming, there's, there's a a real season that I think I'm still walking through Mm. of, moving through what I would describe as instinct injury. And, you know, that's a, probably a conversation for another day if we went really in-depth with that. such a great statement, though. But I, but I think it's, I remember weeping and screaming at the top of my lungs in the hallway after the, the first few months, every time I would have to drop my kids off. Mm-hmm. Because no part of me cellularly mm-hmm. as a mom would ever want to hand over my kids. Yeah. And um, and I remember a really wise woman named Nita Andrews, mm-hmm. who's like a second mom to me, saying, when you're in that state, the simplest thing you can do is say, what do I need right now? Mm-hmm. And so I started in that moment wiggling my toes mm-hmm. to ground and then I would say, what do I need in this moment? And if it was something as simple as, you know, I'm just going to go, I'm going to go wash my car. Mm-hmm. I can, that I can see results. I can, I can feel that I'm cleaning up something. My life feels messy. I'll clean that up. Mm-hmm. Like, and I'll breathe while I'm doing that. I can do that. Mm-hmm. Or, um, I really need to listen. I, re- I just think I really need to listen to an sync song and just dance <laughs> it out in the kitchen. <laughs> I'm just going to do oh, it, you joy. know? And it like those little like those little things were sort of, they sound small, but they're like uh, small hinges on a really large door mm. that uh, over yeah. time, as I would, as I, I would go on a date with somebody and I'd go, man, this feels so familiar, but not in a way that I think is going to be productive for me mm. moving forward. And I'm going to listen to that or, you know, I, I'm in the studio right now and I don't think that bass line's right. And I was raised to be like, it's great. It sounds awesome. And then I go, you know what? I'm actually hearing something different. Like butt squeeze moment. Like, I mean, <laughs> you know, what's going to happen if I speak up? <laughs> and, and being like, oh, wait, no. If I mm. show up, if I speak to what I'm sensing and I'm seeing, mm. without trying to lord over anybody Mm -hmm. if i just say hey this is this is what's coming up for me right now i've noticed that is that is an amazing bridge to other people it's an amazing uh route down to me Mm -hmm. and that it's given me the chance to say okay my kids are freaking out right now i need to be captain of the ship and it's so hard to locate what do I need to do in this moment? And to just go, you know, all I need, what do I need? Okay, wiggle my toes, hmm. take a breath and ask what's underneath. Yes. Because that's the instinct part. Hmm. So I have to feel my tension and my anxiety, which meets me first and hold it like a tantruming child hmm. with tenderness and sturdiness and say, we're going to get through this. Hmm. And then if I can do that, then I get to the root. And I'm able to say what's underneath. And then I'm able to find maybe a little bit more what I need to do next. With tenderness and sturdiness. I know. Is, uh, you I know. do those two things side by side yes, in you such do. an extraordinary way, Joy. Yes, you do. Well, I would like to do it more, but I you think do. thanks for saying that. Mm. You do. And you have shared so many different words that people have given you and you've received over time. Yeah. Are there any other words like parenting advice you've been given over the years that really stayed with you some of the best? Oh, man. A couple things. I mean, then they're all the old adages, right? Of like kids, you know, what is it? It's the Maya Angelou quote. I think mm. it's Maya Angelou that says uh, people rarely remember what you said. They remember how you made them feel. Yes. 
I remember that. I'll always remember that. Mm. Um, I, as I was thinking today about coming and talking with you guys, I think I was like, how do I sum up a lot of the things that I carry with me mm-hmm. from those who've gone before and actually done it well? Because mm-hmm. I'm I'm like winging it. I think we're mm-hmm. all just winging it. Um, hopefully with intentionality, you yes. know, but I think I, I was like, I guess if I could sum it up because it's my job to wordsmith it is I think it would probably go under the header of pray, play, and prepare. Mm. That that's my job is to pray for my kids and know that there's stuff that I'm not going to know how to handle and stuff way beyond my pay grade. And I experience it now. I mean, I come and talk to you guys about Mm. it from time to time. And and that play, for those who've been over-adultified as children, that is actually a really sometimes a really difficult thing to do especially if i'm sleep addled like i am Mm. with an infant sometimes play is hard to locate but the Mm. second i find it there is so much joy and gratitude that Mm. comes out of that Mm -hmm. and prepare which is you can't be i don't mean that in the sense of like prep i mean that it's my job to prepare my children for what i would call you know the the real world and Those moments when I want to be liked, I have to remember it's my job to prepare them, that my job is to equip them and and try and speak to their integrity and build their character over their happiness sometimes in that moment. Mm. And and that I think that would be under the header like that. Those are the things that have stuck with me Mm. is that, you know, prayer for the things that are just always going to be well beyond me Mm. and play. Mm-hmm. as a form of um audacious love mm-hmm. and preparation knowing that it's my job to send them off not to keep them and bubble wrap them yes. and that my job if i do it well that we will become friends mm-hmm. later in time um but to be the parent just be mm-hmm. the parent mm-hmm. I am certain that you all will become friends. Oh, I hope. Yes. They're so I'm rad. <laughs> they're, they're really rad. They're so, mm. There's just so much depth to them. Mm. There's just so much depth to all of us. Mm. What is that? What, um, walk kindly for everyone you meet. Mm. Be kind for everyone you meet is fighting a great battle. Is that yes. St. Francis of yes. Assisi? Yes. Well, we will you talk a little bit? We haven't mentioned your podcast, and we definitely oh, want yeah. folks to listen to that. But will you talk about where folks can find and follow all the different things you're doing? Because there's <laughs> sure. so many amazing things. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I'm at the moment. Like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm in dreamscape land as I'm missing sleep. Mm. Um, I'm in dreamscape land about the future for music for me, mm. but I'm writing for other people a lot and writing for TV film a lot. And, um, but I, I, during the pandemic, when I was also like, you know, a homeschool teacher and like, well, <laughs> we all were, I'm like right. sidewalk chalk math on the driveway <laughs> and bubble science experiments. Um, I also became a host of an Apple radio show called Southern Craft. Mm. And I love getting to highlight other people's creativity mm. and hear the stories of musicians and their own and creative. I mean, we've had everyone from Cameron Crowe to Brandy Carlisle to, I mean, the list mm. goes on and on. And it's just so fun to talk with some friends and make new ones and um, hear about their journeys. And as I've felt at times sort of like, what am I doing with my life? Mm. <laughs> Which can happen from time to time. <laughs> um, but that's always been such a, like a compass rose. Mm. to hear other people's journeys so we do that on top of you know introducing new music that's coming up the pike from creatives and um you know it's everything from like jason isbel to um brandy like i mentioned and uh you know margo price marcus king you know Mm. it's and i just interviewed someone recently uh he's the lead singer of iron and wine who i love so it's just really fun to be able to do that Mm. um yeah, I'm on all and the your music. Yeah, yeah, it's coming, it's coming. I mean, I'm on Spotify. Front porch, and, yes. yeah, front porch. It got nominated for a Grammy, was, and uh, it. yeah, it's it's um. There's more to come. Mm. I I feel, I feel it deep in my bones. I don't quite know the how mm. yet, 
but yet it's my favorite word. Mm. So yeah. I don't know yet, but mm. I am working on it. Mm. So I don't yet have a date when it will be released, but I am working on my own music now and um, have so much to write about. Yeah. There's so much to write about. Mm. Like Ted and I were talking the other day, my husband, um, that what we experienced in going through really painful divorces it's almost like we we both described what felt like like an atom bomb dropped on mm. us. And then after the dust cleared, we looked around and realized we were standing on a platinum mine. Mm. Wow. wow. So, so much there, you know, it doesn't have to be the end. And, and I, I'll, I remember sitting with uh, Haley Williams, who's lead singer of Paramore, but we, I've known her since she was like 13 or 14. And I remember she was playing on her little Nord keyboard. I hope she doesn't mind me sharing this. Um, She's playing on her Nord keyboard in her mom's apartment. And she said, you know, when you're the kid of divorce, it's like tiny funerals every day. Mm. And I had no idea what she meant by that. But now I do. Mm. And to remember that My kids always miss someone. They're always missing someone. Wow. And to stay kind about that, Mm -hmm. to keep that without, again, without bubble wrapping them, but to just stay kind about that. Mm -hmm. And, and to know too, that I've told the kids love never dies. It just changes shape. Mm -hmm. So we'll always be a family. Yeah. You know, and, imperfect and uh, you know and I've I've had plenty of moments where I'm like could have done that better but um but that idea that you know there is a death and a loss with mm-hmm. divorce it's it's mm-hmm. immense and for children who didn't they didn't pick this they did not choose this nor do they end up even if you ask them like hey I'm dating so and so I'm going to give it 6 months you know and then I want to introduce you to him and they're like we already know him he's at school and I'm like I know but you got to chill we're just, we're figuring it out <laughs> you know and and how would you feel if you mm-hmm. know and trying to be patient and slow and steady mm-hmm. it's still not even necessarily their idea to try and live in a house with someone they didn't grow up with sure you know, mm. and to stay patient with that, too. Mm. You know, my parents divorced, you know, yeah, me, but yeah, when yeah. I was 22. But Kathleen, my sister, was six. Yes. And to have, I mean, the both of us walked countless families through this. I, I feel like the beautiful question that's asked so often is, how can I support my kids? Yes. And you're saying, what is it like to live inside my kids' skin? Yeah. In the midst of it. And I just think, what a beautiful place to take that Mm. when you're in the middle of it. It just makes me so excited for every parent who's listening in the midst of that, because I think it's not that we don't want to ask those questions. It's, it doesn't occur to us sometimes. So thank you for letting it occur. Yeah. I mean, I will, I will credit Ted for that. I remember Mm. Ted was a child of of divorce too. I didn't grow up with that. My parents stayed married till the day my dad passed away. And Mm. so there's a lot that I don't, I, I just don't, have in terms of the understanding of that, but Mm. he has it in his body Mm. at times. And I remember, I remember Ted saying, you know, I remember always missing someone and watching the kids at the dinner table, water, I mean, just Mm. instant water Mm. in their eyes. And, um, and, and it's not a terminal, it's not a terminal diagnosis that, we talk a lot of times that if if there is a change of shape of your family, it's because God's doing something. God's going to be at work mm-hmm. in a way that you can't even anticipate. And I never, I swore I'd never get married again. Mm-hmm. I swore I'd never have another child. <laughs> and oh boy, like, <laughs> I'm so glad to be wrong, you mm-hmm. know? And 